pectus does vary greatly in its severity in its shape and the way you develop it some people are born with it some people develop it through puberty so there are individual variances and individual genetics person to person with pectus but there are some similarities between most people with pectus some things that most of us have in common not all there's always going to be an outlier but there are some genetical predispositions that i find people have with pectus so i wanted to discuss the topic of our genetics with pectus excavatum in this video and whether we can really have a good body now, in terms of the body type, so there's three typical body types people have. You're either ectomorphic, endomorphic, or mesomorphic. I find most people with pectus tend to be the ectomorphic body type. So you've got small wrists, small ankles, and you're just genetically skinny. That's definitely the majority of people with pectus, but not all. But from a genetic point of view, if we were looking at a group of, let's say, 100 people with pectus, my guess would be that 90 out of 100 would be ectomorphic you know having dealt with thousands of people with pectus i've definitely worked with a lot of people who are overweight with pectus and we're primarily trying to lose weight to make the pectus look better but the majority of people i help with pectus are really skinny which also obviously makes a bone deformity look a lot worse when you're skinny and your ribs are flaring more your sunken chest is more bony there's no muscle around the pectus so you know majority of people i'm helping them build muscle gain weight and so definitely i'd say the predisposition our genetic predisposition with pectus for the majority of us is ectomorphic definitely was for me as well at my height 6'1 when I was fully grown before I'd gotten into the gym um, when I was like 17 I was 68 kilos so 68 kilos at 185 centimeters tall is, is really quite skinny and lanky lanky that is a word I would describe a lot of people with pectus I'd say a lot of us seem to be relatively tall and typically have long arms and legs so we have long limbs long skinny bony fingers and relatively big hands and feet okay that seems to be a genetic predisposition with people with pectus and that relates to the correlation between pectus and marfan syndrome because that is the marfan syndrome type body type to an extreme uh, people with marfan syndrome have really long arms and legs and, and um, a really small torso and really exaggerated long fingers and i think a lot of people with pectus who may not have marfan syndrome have like derivative um, to a smaller extent symptoms of it including myself again like i've got a two meter arm span and i'm 185 centimeters tall so you know i've got really long arms <laughs> i've got pretty long skinny fingers big feet uh, you know i'm like a size 12 in my in my shoe but i'm, I'm only like six foot one so now again it's not all so if you're watching this video and that's not you um, it's, i'm not saying it's all but i'd say it's the majority so comment below i'd be curious if you guys could comment below whether you're tall whether you think you're ectomorphic or endomorphic what you think your genetic body type is um, and so that'd be interesting to see in the comments so definitely comment below saying what you are now obviously one thing we all have in common with pectus excavatum is a sunken chest that is what pectus excavatum is is when your chest goes in in terms of the question that i proposed at the start of the video is can you have a good body with pectus of course you can uh, but it's it's harder to have um, and depends also on the severity of how sunken in your chest is because that really varies greatly person to person um, but i think even with a sunken chest you can look amazing and you can build your body to make your sunken chest look less noticeable which is obviously what i do and what i've done for myself and hundreds if not thousands of people all around the world over the last decade of coaching people with pectus excavator so you definitely can have a good body um, but it is harder to achieve you have to tailor your training towards pectus um, you want to sculpt your pec muscles around the indent to make it look less noticeable and you really want to just develop a very impressive physique because once you get a very impressive physique it stops your deformity being as noticeable there's so many people with pectus excavatum with great bodies out there who rock it and so you definitely can have a good body with pectus excavatum but it would be negligent of me to not draw awareness to the fact that pectus varies and so it is harder obviously to have a good body with pectus if you have a deeper case but regardless of your case you can make your body better than it is if you're untrained and if you're not working out and if you're not building muscle now another genetic predisposition that we have that i think hurts our ability to have a good body with pectus is the shape of our ribs so due to the nature of our chest caving in it pushes the ribs out and creates flaring rib structure and this can make having a good body harder because it makes your your belly look bigger and it looks like you have a pot belly and it looks like you have a belly even if you're skinny and um, it makes really getting nice abs and obliques more of a challenge and getting just a nice abdomen so you know this is definitely something that hinders our ability to have a good physique but it's again it's nothing we can't work on in fact for me i think the rib flare pot belly annoyed me more as a kid it really used to get me down and now like 
I've really developed my abs and my obliques and gotten a lean muscular physique to the point where that's hardly noticeable and to the point where I'm proud and confident in my body. So, you know, definitely it, it, it made it harder. I remember as a kid, I thought that I would never be able to have a six pack. I thought that I would just always have this pot belly. I used to be so self-conscious of it, but until I trained, I didn't know. And the reality is you guys are not, don't know what your physique is capable of and how good you can get your physique unless you try. So you've got to try. You've got to be consistent. You've got to be disciplined for years. Like it takes at least a year to achieve an amazing physique with pectus. Um, and, and really, you know, the longer you train, the better the result. You know, my clients, most of my client results you see are, are a year package of working with me and being super disciplined with a proven program proven to work. So to see what your body's capable of and what your genetics are capable of and the physique that you can have, like you can't say that you can't have a good physique until you try. I've helped thousands of people already to achieve that and most of them thought they'd never be able to have a good body and they could. Another interesting topic when it comes to the genetics of pectus excavatum is I find that pectus excavatum is often associated with other bone abnormalities. Firstly, scoliosis. I would say Eight out of 10 cases of pectus have scoliosis associated with it, including myself. I have mild, mild scoliosis. Most people I meet on the call also have scoliosis. So it's really common to have scoliosis with pectus excavatum. Uh, strengthening the back, which is really important for improving that kyphotic posture, which makes the pectus look worse, is also important for improving scoliosis. Now, scoliosis, just like pectus, varies in its severity. So if you have scoliosis, you want to get it checked out to just make sure what exercises are safe. Uh, some scoliosis requires surgery, just like pectus as well. So it's worth getting that checked out. Strengthening the back really helps with scoliosis. Strengthening your core muscles really helps with scoliosis. So a lot of the things that we do for pectus is also advantageous for improving scoliosis. But it is really common to have it scoliosis if you have pectus excavatum. It's also common to have other bone abnormalities. Like for me, I have twisted hips and pigeon toes. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, and so, you know, I, I find a lot of people have those things. Actually, a lot of clients that I've worked with have pigeon toes as well. Um, so yeah, that's another predisposition with pectus excavatum is other bone abnormalities, how fun. I always like to draw awareness to the fact that not to be a victim to it. You have what you have, work with what you've got. You've got the cards you've been dealt and now it's about trying to trying to make the best out of that hand, okay? And um, really guys, like you can still achieve so much with pectus excavatum. Now, in terms of our genetics for being strong or being an athlete with pectus excavatum, I think due to the majority of us being ectomorphic in our body type, it does make being strong and being athletic potentially harder, especially with other bone abnormalities, especially with pectus sometimes in impacting lung and heart function. So to, to be fit and have good cardiovascular fitness can be really challenging. Um, so it definitely does being, make being an athlete hard, but again, it's not possible. You've got Thomas Akon who just broke a world record and is Olympic gold medalist in the last Olympic games, Cody Miller. You've got so many high level athletes that have pectus excavator. You can certainly be uh, a good athlete with pectus, but it may be harder. Um, if you ever hear the story when it comes to talent, first work ethic when it comes to being a professional athlete or anything in life. Like work ethic always prevails in the long run, okay? You can be the most talented, the most genetically gifted person, but if you don't have the mental aptitude to stay consistent, to stay disciplined, you're never gonna make it. And pectus doesn't affect our brains, guys. So you can choose on your mindset. You can choose the way you approach life. You can choose your perception of yourself. You can choose the way you carry yourself and you can choose to be a victim or a victor and to work on getting better. Comment below, you know, whether you're ectomorphic, whether you have pigeon toes or whether you have scoliosis, just, you know, it'd be really interesting to see a real big comment thread here of people talking about how pectus impacts them. I've got a community of other pectus warriors all on my app. So if you are looking for a community and other people to talk with with pectus, I've got a community of clients. We have a group call once a month where we touch base um, and we talk about my training and their progress and um, it's a really awesome place so if you're interested in my coaching you can become a part of the pectus pt client community and um, meet a group of other amazing people with pectus excavator who are all working on overcoming their pectus so that'll be the link in description to go to my website to then book a strategy call with me it's the first step to becoming a client and then we can get you started on that journey thanks guys peace